Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go dirt biking in Centurion when we went up to Man. Centurion to visit family and friends and stuff. So without rambling too much, we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to give you guys some of my afterthoughts on it because I really didn't have the capacity to motor vlog whilst I was riding dirt. It was absolutely like next level, but I had a blast of time. So we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to do like a reaction kind of video. I hope you guys like this format. Let me know if you do by leaving a comment down below. Without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. This is the bike I was riding, it's a KTM, uh, I believe it's a 300cc 4 stroke, 2 stroke, 2, two stroke. Yeah. So basically what I did was I got on the bike and I just did like a couple of pull-offs to get comfortable with where the clutch is, where everything is, just, you know, getting familiarized with the bike, ran up and down in the parking lot a couple of times. You can see there that my clutch control is a little bit lurchy. Uh, it's still quite an unfamiliar clutch for me and it's exceptionally sensitive. Like, that's one thing that I found crazy with riding dirt is the bikes are like, you just touch the throttle and the power is there. Like, clutch takes so lightly compared to the street bike so it was it was a very different experience like it's insane I was like it was weird I was standing on the back brake and hadn't realized it so it kind of threw me over weaving through the road trying to feel what it feels like to like weave a little because it's very different on dirt and I'm going to be doing that quite a lot. Mm. Here it goes. Let's go die. Comfortable. I'm gonna die. <laughs> no, I think so. Like a bit of batting. Yeah. We'll take it easy, okay? Let's follow. Follow, I'll go and I'll Obviously, Simon has got much, he's got a lot more experience than me, so you can see how he's counterbalancing while he was taking these obstacles, which I most certainly wasn't doing. At this point, I was literally trying to keep control. I was literally trying to keep control of the bars and not heave myself into the sun. Because these bikes are just, like, they are so talky. Not sponsored, by the way. Now there was like rocks and stuff and it was a challenge to get going again. 
And um, it's like quite nerve wracking because I'm not used to this much loss of traction and like massively bumpy terrain. Ruts can be pretty sketch. <laughs> Look how soft I am. I had to walk it through there. I wonder if Simon did too. Let's go back there. He didn't paddle, but he was definitely dabbing. Yeah. This is good. This is good. <laughs> oh, okay. Pause this quickly. Uh, so basically, what happened there was there was like a little jump, and I saw it, and I saw him take it. So I was like, okay, here goes. And then I I I went to give it a little bit more oomph. But when I gave it a little bit more oomph, I was a bit late on it. So as soon as I went up and over, when the back wheel was free, I gave it wham! And so Simon heard it, thought that I bailed, and stopped in the middle of the track. And now because I yeeted it, and he stopped, I had nowhere to go. So I grabbed the fistful of brakes and almost went into the tree. My GoPro actually came off of the chin, well, the whole chin mount actually unclipped from the helmet at this point. It was hanging in the tree, which is quite hilarious. I kind of whiskey throttled it a little bit. Yeah, I was like, but when I looked back, I was like, I, like, I was, when I heard it, that's when I stopped, I'm like, fuck, something's gone wrong. <laughs> Brilliant, good jump. <laughs> I, I kind of uh, overcooked it. I didn't. Uh, it's quite uh, sensitive. Yeah, you can see I'm a little bit lost for words because I had so like so much sensual overload, sensory sensory overload at this point. Like everything was hyper focused, trying to maintain clutch and throttle, and all the feedback from the bars. It was it was absolutely crazy. The crazy thing about this place, okay, so we, we went to this place called Wild West in uh, in Centurion, and basically it's just enduro tracks. Now, my only dirt experience that I've had before this was when I actually started learning to ride. Huh? Okay. Okay, are you going to follow? Yeah. Okay, like I was saying before, we really interrupted ourselves. Um, what was I saying? Oh, my only dirt bike experience was on an MX track when I was actually learning to ride, whether I was deciding whether I wanted to or didn't want to ride motorcycles and um, that was an MX track so all flat all open a little like a few jumps here and there a couple of berms but nothing as rough and as feedback giving as riding in Giro. so yeah like my brain was pretty much poo at this point Oh, I missed the gear. Also, Um, 
like I was saying, again, um, one of the things that I found really weird was that I wanted to get into a very, like, commanding, over the, like, over the bars kind of, kind of feel. Um, but the levers were, like, Man. quite high up. <laughs> right. When you're approaching a corner like that, yeah. see if you can get as far into the front as you can in the bike. Okay. What it's going to do is it's going to put more weight on the front wheel. Yeah. Then you're going to get more traction. You won't be slipping out like that. Even if the back does slip a bit. Yeah. You're still confronting with the front. But you're riding well, bro. Yeah. I left the, the camel back on the bucky. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Turn around. Are you thirsty? No, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm good. No, dude, I'm, I'm like, I'm genuine still fine. Yeah, but I think take it in case because it also helps if you bail. Here we go. Oh. I fucking whiskey throttled it there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just remember the clutch. Yeah. Clutch can save you out of most, most, most problems. <sighs> you clip it in the front. Say again? Backpack clip. Oh, uh, probably not. I'm such a noob. Just <laughs> moving up the way. So there we go. Just clip it there. Here's the one. Uh, go on. Take this tin strap of your GoPro. Yeah. Put it through it. Should have done that long ago. Yeah. Okay, so, like I was saying before I bailed, again, um, what I found really challenging was that the, the levers were in, like, they were quite high, and, I mean, it's, it's not a bike, so I don't really want to go and make adjustments to everything to, like, make me super comfortable, um, but that meant that for a lot of the time I was doing this with my arms and not actually getting over the controls, which I found, obviously, to be a little bit of a challenge. The other thing is that, um, like, when I'm on the street bike, I've got a lot of space between my seat and the bars. I basically sit as far back in the seat as I possibly can. And I translated that sort of riding position into here. So often you'll see whenever I'm looking down towards the tank, you'll see that I'm a lot further away from the tank. Like, I've got miles of seat between me and the tank. Um, and that was one of the things that Simon was saying to me, you know, get forward, get towards the handlebars, get your weight closer forward. And I kept being further back because I'm used to having this massive tank in front of me. So that was also like quite a weird mind switch that I had to go through. For the most part, I didn't struggle too much. Um, but you do see you often when I bail, it's, simple things that maybe had I been working with my clutch modulation better I would have probably not had bail. I lose it here somewhere too. Stepped up on a rut or something. Let's see. There we go. Hold it. It's like I can predict the future. Did, uh, was there a GPS or something in you? No. Okay. Now. It's difficult, it's more for a much later time, but ideally to get out of that now, what you do is you find pivot. So you'll put your, your left leg, I'm going to do it to the right and I'll show you. Yeah. Show so off. you load up the forks. And you just give it a small blip, hey? not too much power, but you're on the clutch. Yeah. You just want to make the front light so that you can shift it round. So, 
Check how far back I'm sitting. You okay. Too. Like if you want to, you can it's reverse crazy, back man. and forth. It's a, it's a, it is a, a move that is about two rides away. to improve my skills for, for riding like enduro like if i get an opportunity to do this again like it would be absolutely incredible because like this is so much more technical than street riding it's not even funny like there's a lot of technique in street riding but like here it's slow speed like you're really whipping the controls with the bike you're like really in charge that's it's very very different when you're doing this kind of thing on a street bike like street bikes you just you ride there's no crazy bumps uh, it's just very difficult to get and i would i would like i say i would love an opportunity to do this again and i'd i'd like to do it more frequently because this is a crazy amount of um, skill that's going into it clutch control acceleration like everything is just so much more precise it's less forgiving although when you drop it it's very forgiving because you know it's like 10 k's an hour Seconds, yeah? Twenty well, seconds. <laughs> I had so much forward momentum. Dude, it's insane. <laughs> My arms are sat. <laughs> okay. When you go for a break, break under a tree. I feel so sorry for, for Simon. Like, so he rides events like Roof of Africa and MP, which is like 100 kilometers a day of enduro. And here I am after probably like one or two kilometers and I'm like broken. I'm like, bro, I'm ready to die. And this isn't like even half of the riding that we did. You know what we should do for fun days, right? We should come riding and I'll give you all the wrong advice. Uh, you put it up and you just take notes trolling the whole time. Then they're like, fuck, dude, that's wrong. He's teaching you wrong. <laughs> the easiest one, right? Yeah, talk about engagement, right? Oh, bad coaching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you did well. Why don't you get your, get your stones on those two little... Rocky ones, didn't panic, didn't touch the front brake, just kept on going, good time. I had my foot too far back, I tried to drop shift, it didn't happen and I slammed on the anchor. <laughs> it was like, whoa! <laughs> it's weird, because my, my foot pegs are like here. So it's like a huge difference between so the two. Forward. <laughs> sit forward, sit forward. Height, you know what I mean, like you've got good, your legs, you can get your legs out easy. Yeah. When you're short. 
don't know what happened there. Probably target fixated on something. I must say, what, what I found really difficult with um, Enduro is that because you're on like these twisty paths and you've got like all these jumps and stuff, is because the ground is a lot more technical, you're looking a lot closer to where you are. And I think this is probably because I'm obviously a, a beginner. Um, but like I don't look very far ahead so everything that comes at me is just coming at me so damn fast because I'm not looking ahead like I would try and do when I'm riding on the street because everything is just new it's sensory overload and I think when you've got experience oh, what happened there? Stall. Oh no I murdered the kill switch with my GoPro check at this <laughs> and I had no idea what the hell just happened. Stalled. Uh uh. I checked the kill switch, bro. Maybe it wasn't installed. <laughs> oh, I must have moved it with the GoPro. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I, I didn't like register the kill switch because obviously I didn't deliberately switch off the kill switch. Obviously this happened to Simon many times. Trying to start with the bike while the kill switch is killed. No man. thing I, I did notice is that I struggle pull off while standing like <sighs> that is something that I would like to learn to do so it's something I'm going to practice doing on the street because why not I wasn't gonna struggle. The position was too awkward, the angles were awkward. I was like, no, I'm just gonna walk it up and then get on the bike. I should have locked my exposure. Sorry, you guys. First time I've ever done a reaction move, so I didn't think about locking my exposure. I'm just gonna have to deal with my terrible, terrible production. Problem. So sorry. I survived. What do you think? Motherfucker. Oh, dude. <laughs> Tired. My arms and wrists. <laughs> it's a whole different ball game, bro. Different, eh? Woo! Motherfucker. I was so tired. <laughs> wow, we look at that face, man. Yo, right, everybody. It's um, it's editing Matt over here, and I've still got about an hour and four minutes of unedited footage from the second part of our dirt biking adventures. So, if you want to check that out, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell over here somewhere so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And why don't you leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever been dirt biking, if you would like to see more dirt biking related content or anything like that. And yeah, 
Once again, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Simon for giving me this opportunity to go riding. Really, really appreciate it. It was a blast of a time. Thank you very much, guys. Just remember, whatever life is throwing at you, don't look down. Look ahead. And until next time, ride safe.